All right, what we're going to do is uh, look at one of my favorite spaces, P2, and figure out whether or not a set of vectors in that space is a linearly independent set. So as usual, when we work with linear independence, all I want to do is I want to pick three constants. I'm going to label them C1. Um, oh, three constants because I have three vectors, right? And so C1 is going to be multiplied by the first vector. I'm going to add that to C2 multiplied by the second vector plus C3 multiplied by the third vector. And I want to see if that equals the zero vector. Okay? And, or I want to make it equal to the zero vector. And then I want to see what happens to C1, C2, and C3. Does that force them to be zero, this equation? If it does, then this set S is linearly independent. Okay, now, so you had to do a little work here to figure out what your coefficients are because they're all they're all sort of hidden inside this big ugly equation right here. So I'm going to work on this guy a little bit. I'm going to do what you'd expect you to do. So multiply through by C1 here. So I get C1 minus C1 times X plus C2 minus, now I'm going to multiply the second vector by C2 and the third vector by C3 in order to rearrange terms and set up equations of like terms, at least like coefficients, okay? And plus C, 3C3x squared minus 2C3x and minus C3, and that equals the zero vector. Now what's the zero vector look like in P2? Well, it's really just zero times x plus zero times, oops, it's zero times, it's just zero, that's the constant term, plus zero times x plus zero times x squared. Isn't that giving me back zero in P2? That's what zero looks like, right? The zero polynomial in P2. Now, we're going to use that to equate coefficients, like coefficients on the left and right inside this equation. So the first equation I'm going to deal with, I'm going to do it in red because I can, is are all the um, all the constant terms on the left hand side? Well, the constant terms have to sum up to be zero, don't they? Well, we know that because of what I've underlined over here. So, what do I have on the left hand side that has to sum up to be zero? C one, so I can check that off. Plus C two, and check that off. And do I have a C three? Sure enough, minus C three. We know that has to equal zero. Now what we can do is look at what happens to all the linear terms. We know all their coefficients have to sum up to be zero. And so why is that? Because in the zero vector in P2 has a linear coefficient of zero. So on the right hand side here I'm going to put a zero knowing where they're going and I have a negative C1. Remember this is just the coefficient so I leave off the X. I'm making a coefficient equation. And I don't have a C2 so I'm going to leave that blank. But I do have minus 2C3. Alright, now we're making progress. Right? Last one we'll do in purple. That's the quadratic term. On the left hand side I've got a Let's see, I don't have a C1, but I do have a C2. It's minus C2 as my coefficient for x squared, and then a plus 3C3 as my coefficient for x squared, and we know that that has to sum to be 0. Now we've come up with a system of equations based on this, this basic equation, which is the definition of linearly independent, or at least it sets it up to be that. All right, now we just have to figure out what happens to my Cs. All right, you guessed it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into an augmented... Well, let's use a different color so that you feel good about that. Okay, different color. Um, well, I've already used blue. Yeah, boy, maybe I should look at the spectrum here. Let us use this really creepy orange. Good. Okay, so what we're going to do is 
I don't even know if that worked. Okay. Or, oh, yeah, it did. Okay, so I've got this orange colored matrix. And let me get rid of this stray dot. So it's going to be an augmented coefficient matrix, right, of this set of linear equations. And so what do I get? I want 1, 1, negative 1, augmented 0. I get a negative 1, 0, negative 2, 0. 0, negative 1, 3, 0. Let me check my work. Sure enough, that's what I get. Now, we get to use our calculator since we're into the second test material now. And luckily, I've already programmed this in. You'll see I've got this matrix in A. And it's exactly what I've written here. So what I'm going to do is go to row reduce echelon form. And I want to do that to A. And I'm going to write down what I get. So what do I get? Squiggly line, row reduced echelon form. I get 1, 0, 2, 0, 1, negative 3. Well, I better go back and get rid of that squiggle. Turns out that my My negative time sign was sort of looking like a squiggle. And then I've got a last row of zeros, which should tell you right away that I don't have linear linear independence. I have linear dependence. So I'm going to show you why that's true. So let's confirm that that's what I got. I wrote it down on a piece of paper, but let's just confirm that's what I got. Sure enough, I did. All right. So now what does this mean in terms of C1, C2, and C3? Let's decode this final answer matrix, right? So that means that C1 plus 2C3 has to equal 0. That means that 1 times C2 minus C3, 3C3 has to equal 0. And I don't get any information from below. Well, what does that mean? That means that, well, C1 equals a negative 2C3 c2 equals 3c3 so I can put everything in terms of c3 let that equal t and then suddenly I get c1 is equal to a negative 2t c2 equals 3t c3 equals t so everybody who looks like this so that means that everybody, here's my solution, everybody that looks like this, negative 2t, 3t, t, t, which is the same as negative 2, 3, 1, multiplied by t, everybody who looks like that will, will make these, make these vectors in linear combination go to zero. So of course there's it doesn't mean of course we found that C is not zero C one is not zero, C two is not not zero, C three is not zero. So of course we have linear dependence here. But what I want to want to show you is that you could actually test that, right? So if I went back to my original problem and actually you know, used my answer that I just got for C1, C2, and C3, rewrote it, I would I would end up getting back zero. Now which one would you use? Because I have an infinite number of solutions. Let's just let t equals one. T equal one. Alright. T equals one. So I'm gonna write over here. S is a linearly dependent set. It's not linearly independent because I didn't get back all zeros. So what if t equals 1? Well, that means that I get c1 equals a negative 2, c2 equals 3, and c3 equals 1, right? Now, what if I go back to my original equation 
and plug in these values for my constant. So I'd have a negative 2 times the first vector. Oops, it's 1 minus. So 1 minus. one minus x plus what's my c2 three times my second vector which is one minus x squared and then plus one times my third vector which is three x squared minus two x minus one now <clears throat> What I'm going to do is, is work all this out, simplify this, and I think you're going to find that this all becomes 0. So negative 2 plus 2x plus 3 minus 3x squared plus 3x squared minus 2x minus 1. These guys become 1. So sure enough, 1 minus 1 gives me 0. These guys cancel out right? Negative 3x squared plus 3x squared equals 0. And these guys are 0 if I add them together. So sure enough, I got 0. Now what does that tell me? That tells me that I found a solution to this equation up here that helps me find linear independence, right? Determine linear independence. That whose, whose solution, I mean, I found a solution that that's not all 0 for constants. And of course, that means that I'm linear independent. I mean, linearly dependent. Let me say that again. It means I'm linearly dependent. And um, you don't have to do this on a test right here because it's clear if you show that I get a parametric solution, then the answer, you know, the answer is not all zeros for the constant. That this equation up here does not necessitate that the the constants are all zero, okay? But I did want to show you that you could you could demonstrate that I found some values for the constants that aren't zero, that aren't all zero, that in linear combination send these particular vectors to zero, all right? It's one way, of, weird way of saying it. And of course, there are an infinite number of these, and so you can go crazy. You don't have to choose one. You could choose t to be anything you want.